Hello and welcome back to the series on neural networks for DH. In this video, we're going to be building off of what we saw in the last video when we explored models and layers. And we're going to also be building upon the initial video, which explored the general architecture of a neural network. We're going to be looking at specifically training, how training works, what key concepts are occurring that you need to be familiar with for doing training through neural networks, such as weights and activation functions, and some of the more problematic outcomes of training, specifically overfitting and underfitting neural network models. So let's go ahead and jump right in. In the first video of the series, we looked at an image like this one, where we had an input layer, a hidden layer, and an output layer. This, if you remember, was our neural network architecture. Every neural network has at least three layers, one that receives the data, one that performs some kind of mathematical operation on that data, and then a final one that outputs a result of those mathematical operations. In more complex neural networks, if you remember, we have multiple hidden layers. This is the difference between a shallow neural network and a deep neural network. In this video, we're going to dive in a little closer and look at what's happening in between these steps. So let's take, for example, our case of Oscar Wilde and Dan Brown once again, which is going to be the basis of our video of binary text classification. Imagine that we are trying to train a neural network. So what we are going to do is we are going to feed it a bunch of texts from Dan Brown and Oscar Wilde of equal size. So let's just say 10,000 sentences from each author with each sentence minimized or maximized to 10 words. Now I'm going to explain why there are a bunch of zeros in these instances in a later video. Essentially what we are trying to do is to make sure that our arrays, which is what this is, a numerical NumPy array, are of equal length. Now, what is occurring here is that we are going to feed all of these pieces of information into our neural network. Now, with each one of these sentences, we already know if it is Dan Brown or if it is Oscar Wilde. If it is Oscar Wilde, it's going to have a numerical value of zero. If it's Dan Brown, its label is going to have a numerical value of one. What we are going to do is tell the neural network what each of these sentences are and what it should have as an expected target or result. This is what comes out of the neural network. So the input layer has a known value. That's the numerical array. The output value uh, is a known value for the output layer, and that is a single number, 0 or 1. What it is going to do in the hidden layer is use mathematical operations, such as weights and activations, to try to get to that expected numerical output. And in doing so, it's going to run the data through neurons, which are going to perform either any kind of activation function on them with a summed version of all the weights from all the input neurons. Again, this is going to make a lot more sense in practice. And as Francois Chalet says, you don't actually have to have a mass understanding of the mathematics here to understand how to use and implement neural networks. What you need to understand is that the weights are a value being applied by the neural network at total random to try to get to the known target label. And in doing so, it's going to iterate across all of these thousands of input data, uh, input sentences from each author, and it can do this over the course of multiple generations, or what are known as epochs, E-P-O-C-H-S, epochs. These epochs allow for your neural network to iterate across the same data, the training data, multiple times. And in doing so, it's going to constantly adjust its weights based on its output. If it was incredibly wrong in its output, say it's, a, it's an Oscar Wilde that has a zero and it's fully confident that it's coming out with a one and then it looks at the known value and realizes that it was wrong, it's going to then go back and for the next iteration, adjust its weights to try to make sure that the activation function in the hidden layer is adjusted accordingly to try to get it as close to zero as possible. 
This is what's happening in a neural network very quickly and very, very um, repetitively over the course of all the input data, the training data, sometimes multiple times. Again, you do not have to have a firm mathematical understanding of what's occurring here. And for this reason, and because we are humanists, I'm not going to get into the mathematics. If you are interested in the mathematics, I'm going to provide a link in the description down below that'll introduce you to key concepts, such as the sigmoid function, the ReLU function on a mathematical level. I am also going to provide a link in the description down below to a video on stochastic gradient descent and the other statistical background information that might be of interest to those viewers, but not necessary for the implementation of neural networks. Now, during this process, we are not going to always have the results that we want to see. Sometimes our information or our neural network will perform very, very poorly. In this case, we have to step back and ask ourselves why. In some cases, our neural network will be very, very good at working on our training data, but perform very badly on our testing data and on unseen data. In these cases, we have what is known as an overfitted model. It means that it has essentially memorized or become very familiar with the training data, but can actually perform the same tasks on unseen data. Instances of this are cases where the model doesn't actually uh, make accurate guesses about what an item is, prediction, and instead makes wholly inaccurate ones. So it might look at an Oscar Wilde text and every single time output that it is a Dan Brown text. This is a bad model. Another example of a problematic training process is known as underfitting. This is equally problematic. And it typically means that your training data is either not comprehensive enough, or it means that your architecture is not sophisticated enough to handle the training data. And this occurs when the neural network is split. It can't make a decision and often assigns a value of 0.4 or 0.5 or 0.6 for every single data that it's looking at. In these cases, you need to consider gathering more data or performing data augmentation, which I'm going to talk about in a later video in this series, or adjusting your neural ne network architecture. There are a lot of different ways to solve overfitting and underfitting that are oftentimes very data specific. It is therefore not in the realm of this video series to address all instances, rather the instances that are going to occur as we look at binary and multi-class text and image classification in later videos. Hopefully you've found this very basic introduction to what's happening inside of it, the training process of a neural network useful and helpful. Again, there is much more that can be explored here, but as this video series is intended for digital humanists, I'm not going to delve into the mathematics or the statistics very closely, rather focus on the conceptual and implementation process of a neural network. Again, if you'd like to see more specific videos on this, I have links in the description down below to experts in mathematics and machine learning. That's going to be it for this video though. Thank you for listening, and if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe down below. In the next video, we're going to be looking at the next stage of the process, the testing, validation, and loss, so that we can then finally explore prediction, and the implementation of a neural network on a general level.